Ah, and we are live! Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We have a great show for you today, as always. We are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash Takes by Fans. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, folks. However you want to watch or listen, we've got you covered multiple ways. Alrighty, today is a big old Friday, um, so we got to update our NBA power rankings. We do that on every Friday. Started at last week, and now you know we can start moving some pieces around. And we do have... At the top, there's a lot of movement at the top. We've got some new teams in the top 10, so that's fantastic. Uh, so that's what we got on the show today. We also are going to be revealing our pick for our Super Bowl pick, <laughs> our Super Bowl play. We're going to be uh, telling you what we think. Um, we kind of hinted at it yesterday. I think we kind of actually said it multiple times throughout the show, not really hinting at it. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll tell you what we're thinking um, today and then you know probably you know we'll update you on how we're feeling every day because we got a whole nother week that we can possibly maybe find some more information uh find something else out so we'll give you our initial picks and then we'll update you uh throughout the next week on you know if we still are sticking with that pick but i think we will I think we will. Uh, so we got all that on the show today. Going to be a good one. Um, so and then also breaking down the NBA from yesterday. Uh, but first, we got to start with our stories. So let's start here. All righty, our money maker. Um, only what was there? Four games on last night. Pretty good games as well. Uh, but we had our money maker going, and it did pretty good. I mean. We only hit one of two, but we uh, we basically we basically hit both. So yeah, here we go. Um, our money maker yesterday was Rockets minus four and a half over the Blazers, and it was a very close game. Rockets ended up winning by three. Darn, we had a minus four and a half, very close. But you know, we picked the right team. You know, we thought they would still win. And I'll give it up for the Blazers. I mean, they're incredible three point scoring down the stretch. I gotta give it up to them. Really, the three point shooting throughout the entire game was absolutely on point. But um, Gary Trent Jr., I think, is that who I'm talking about? Um, uh, he was going absolutely wild with the threes. I think he hit seven of them, huge threes in the fourth quarter as well down the stretch. So close game. Rockets end up winning. We took a minus four and a half. They won by three. Very, very close there. And then Clippers. We told y'all if Jimmy Butler was not playing, we love the Clippers plus four and a half. Uh, we found out, I think about like five o'clock last night that uh, Jimmy Butler was not playing. We So the bet was good to go. Clippers plus four and a half. They win outright. Don't even need the extra four and a half points. So, I mean, folks, you know, these last two days were, you know, five of or four or five overall, but basically five of five. I mean, Rockets minus four and a half. They Win by three. Very, very close there. So doing very good here at the start of our kind of NBA moneymaker season. And we're still chugging along. And there's a lot of games on tonight. So we're coming at you live with another great moneymaker. A lot more games to pick through, comb over, and, uh, you know, we'll get you the best bets. Because we could have took the Lakers minus like seven last night. We totally stayed away from that because we knew something could have happened and they lose outright. So, I mean, you know, out of the four games, choosing these two good ones here, I think we did a pretty good job. Um, alrighty, continuing on here. Alrighty, Adam Schefter says Bucks and Chiefs enter a critical phase of the COVID precautions, folks, because any player or coach with a positive test beginning today will be automatically ruled out for the Super Bowl because they need all that time to get negative tests back. So, um, you know, the NFL is still sticking with it. Hey, if one of your main guys has COVID, that's unfortunate. You got to go without him because we are not moving games, especially the Super Bowl. So it is what it is. If you get COVID, you're out. No postponing. Patrick Mahomes gets it. Postponing. Tom Brady gets it. Postponing. Well, maybe if Tom Brady, Brady gets it, they may make an exception. I think he's probably the only player, possibly, possibly, if he gets COVID, they may, may, may make it, uh, make an exception for. So, um, you know, we've been, the NFL has been doing great all season with the COVID. Like we said, only really two bad outbreaks throughout the entire season, and it really didn't derail anything. It moved a couple of games back, but I mean, everything was still really on schedule, so... Um, you know, should be all fine. We haven't had any bad COVID news in the playoffs, I don't think. 
yeah, throughout the entire playoffs, nothing bad has happened. So let's knock on wood here just to give that extra kind of extra, all right, nothing's going to happen here. But, um, yeah, COVID in the Super Bowl, it's business as usual, basically. Uh, so we'll definitely, well, well, obviously, everybody's keeping an eye on that, but we will definitely be keeping an eye on that. Uh, all righty, moving on. And um, the next story is about uh, Big Ben a little bit. Big Ben saying that he kind of wants to come back and play. Um, his agent says that Big Ben is planning to meet with, you know, the president, the head coach, and every, like, everything like that of the Steelers organization to discuss his plans of the future. Um, he wants to play. He's made it kind of, you know, adamant that he does want to play here. Here he says, I am pretty sure I want to go one more year because I think I can do it and give us a real chance at winning. Ooh, I don't think you give us a real chance at winning. I mean, folks, we just watched him last season. He wasn't looking that great. The arm strength wasn't there. He was dinking and dunking all season. You're not going to win in this league by dinking and dunking. You've got the receivers who can go down the field and catch the ball, deep balls, but Big Ben can't really get them there consistently and accurately. So, yes, Big Ben wants to play one more year, but if I'm the Steelers, I think we got to cut it loose. I mean, it's a business at the end of the day, and it's unfortunate at that, but, uh, you know, he's not going to win you a ring this man is not Tom Brady he's not you know better as he ages the man you know he's been banged up surgeries you know the arm is just not there anymore and Big Ben wants to play so much he said this I don't care about my pay at all this year he doesn't care so you know he'll be playing for nothing but uh you know they'll maybe restructure his contract because that you know Big Ben just wants to play this one last year I don't think it's the right choice for the Steelers maybe they draft the quarterback and then you know let Big Ben go one more year so you have that quarterback sitting behind Big Ben I mean he can still coach the game teach the game to his kind of predecessor but um you know I, he's not gonna win a ring if he's a star Starting quarterback, the Steelers will not win a ring. The arm is just not there anymore. And it is truly unfortunate because the Steelers team, they've got the pieces. They've got some real good talent at wide receiver. And Big Ben's been in the league forever. Hall of Famer, you know, multiple rings. He's been there. So it's unfortunate how his uh, career is ending. But, you know, father time catches up with everybody. We just saw it happen with Drew Brees. He did not look good in that uh, his final playoff game, his final game of his career, most likely um, against the Bucks this season. So. Big Ben still wants to be a Steeler next season. I don't think it's the smartest choice, but hey. Alrighty, Chiefs, man. This is a dynasty. We are living through a dynasty. These Chiefs, folks, these Chiefs are so freaking good. Chiefs' average yards per play going back to 2018 was 6.7 yards a play. 2019 was 6.2 yards a play. And then this year is 6.3 yards a play. So, folks, I mean, this offense is good. It's explosive. There's no signs of slowing down. Patrick Mahomes is great. They've got the talent. They've got the weapons. They've got the coaching staff. they got the offensive core coordinator folks they've got everything this is the new dynasty here so let's start appreciating it a little bit more and you know I'm all I'm all for dynasties I want to see the greatest in my lifetime I want to witness the greatness I you know I love the Warriors dynasty I love the Patriots dynasty and now we get this Chiefs dynasty if they win this ring folks back to back Super Bowls really like um really just kind of um I can't even think of the word um, cementing themselves, their legacy in the, you know, the greatest of all time, the greatest dynasty, the greatest team, the greatest players. They're all cementing their legacy these last three seasons. Absolutely love it. Absolutely here for it. And, you know, it's tough. I don't know who to root for in the Super Bowl. This new dynasty of Patrick Mahomes or the old dynasty, the single lone dynasty, the lone wolf dynasty. Has there ever been a lone wolf dynasty? It's all Tom Brady. He's proved it. He went to the Bucs, instantly got them to a Super Bowl. No, no extra year needed no prep year needed he's good to go so you know Tom Brady single dynasty himself the whole Patriots that's a whole nother dynasty with Tom Brady and now we get this uh, Chiefs one so great great play by the Chiefs so fun to watch so explosive and they're so consistent last three years to continue nobody can figure them out nobody can stop them in three years three straight years you got to get up to, gotta give it up to them folks truly 
Um, all righty, and then the last story, I mean, coaching matters, folks. Coaching matters. Um, great news for Washington head coach Ron Rivera. He was declared cancer-free yesterday, had another checkup. Everything's good to go. No more cancer. He has officially beat it. Well, for now, so let's knock on wood. Um, but, you know, absolutely fantastic. I mean, battling cancer, still coaching a team, got them to a division win, got them to a playoff game, got them competitive in a playoff game. I mean, they almost beat Brady. They lost by what? Five points? One possession? game almost beat them coaching matters folks the, who, who's the superstar on the Washington can you even name one play I'll give you five seconds go ahead name me a player on Washington besides the quarterback Alex Smith okay then so coaching matters 100% folks I mean there's no superstar on this Washington team um, you know, everybody's buying into Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera, you know, he's a great coach, great leader. Everybody buys into him. That's why, you know, role playing, role players have success when there's a good coach there. So this is the perfect hire. Glad that he's cancer free. Next year, I mean, they got a pretty decent draft pick, extra time under their belt. Maybe they fr they maybe they sign a real good free agent. And, you know, Washington, they they probably are early favorites of the best team or should be the favorites for Washington to win the NFC East going into next year right now. Um, the Cowboys are a mess. And, you know, the Giants are good. Um, the Giants are pretty good. Uh, they've got the pieces there. Once Saquon Barkley comes back. And then, you know, the Eagles, they don't have a head coach anymore. So we don't know what's going on with there. So absolutely love it. Coaching matters. So when we hear these no names get hired, you know, when teams hear that, you know, they're their their franchise decided to go into a direction of an unproven head coach who's just kind of a nobody it does infuriate fans it infuriates me because coaching matters 100 percent. this is not the nba where coaching really doesn't matter that much as long as you got the players you need this head coach there's 52 players on a the roster there th there's three different facets of the game you play one game a week you have to practice an entire week just to go for you know three hours of gameplay so you need somebody you need a true leader to to turn really men into men and keep them men for multiple seasons and keep the distractions out of the locker room and you have to you have to get everybody buying in and that's what Ron Rivera does he has success everywhere he goes first year in Washington battling cancer no superstars and they get a playoff game a home playoff game because they won the division coaching matters folks a thousand percent in the NFL you know, Deshaun Watson, he wants to get out of Houston because there was no head coach. Even the head coach they got was absolutely train wreck, ruined the organization. So you can either have a head coach that literally will ruin your organization or really elevate and make everybody forget about, you know, do you remember when we were doing um, in the offseason the big stories coming out of Washington of all like the sexual misconduct claims coming out of there? And Ron Rivera, one year, makes everybody forget about that, turns this team around a thousand percent and, you know, uh, the home playoff game is really what seals it for me with this man is truly inspiring what this man is doing truly um, alrighty, those are all the stories that we needed to get out of the way. So let's kind of transition to the NBA here. We'll quickly highlight, um, you know, the four games. We'll go a little deeper into the stats, and then we'll do our power ranking. So without further ado, here we go. Starting with the Blazers and the Rockets in an absolutely great game. Um, love what I'm seeing from the Rockets. Victor Oladipo, John Wall being absolutely cashed together. They're both eating. They're both making clutch shots. I mean, John Wall had a huge three, I think, with like, four minutes left in the fourth quarter to really kind of because the Blazers were I mean this was a battle back and forth all game and the Rockets had some nice shots in the fourth quarter the Blazers had some good shots in the fourth quarter but at the end of the day the Rockets were the ones to get it done um, you know in the Blazers they just don't have CJ McCollum I mean if they have CJ McCollum back in the starting lineup I mean folks this is still a good team same thing with Yusef Nurchich so this Blazers team is still good Damian Lillard is still caring as much as he can just needs that extra superstar that extra kind of uh, shooting power. And once they get CJ McCollum back, the Blazers will get back on track. But love what I'm seeing for the Rockets. I told you all the Rockets won the trade between them and the Wizards. And uh, John Wall is balling out here. And, you know, we've seen two games of Victor Oladipo and John Wall both together. And I love it, folks. I'm big on this Rockets team. Truly big. So they get the win 104-101. Alrighty, Lakers. Ooh, ooh, they lose to the Pistons. And the Pistons are beating like all the good teams. Why is that? Why is that? They can't beat the bad teams, but they rise up to the occasion against the good teams. They beat the Lakers and they beat one other good team in the last like week. It's crazy. I'm quickly trying to see if I can figure it out. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Um 
Oh, the 76ers. So the Pistons have beaten the 76ers and the Lakers all within the past week. I don't understand it. Um, they beat the Lakers here. Lakers had no Anthony Davis. They just lost their first road game of the season two nights ago. So, you know, that's kind of why we stayed away from this game in our moneymaker because we're like, you know, uh, the Lakers, they were only really kind of going hard on the road because they were undefeated at that point. Once they got their first loss, we knew, you know, the, the kind of momentum – would take a sharp decline, and it definitely did here. Um, Pistons, Blake Griffin, first good game of the season, so let's give it up to him. We'll uh, dissect him a little bit more in the stats, but Detroit and Blake Griffin, are they finally getting it together? I wouldn't go that far, but Blake Griffin finally had a good game. Uh, so the Pistons get the win, 107-92. Really kind of a blowout there in the fourth quarter. Alrighty, Clippers in the Heat. In the Heat are a good team. Let's all calm down on this. They just have a lot of issues with Jimmy Butler not being able to go because of the health and safety protocols. It's unfortunate. But I see a lot of people on Twitter saying the Heat are trash and then, you know, um, who's what's his name? Paul Pierce. Um, you know, he says that the Heat won't make the playoffs. Can we all tone it down a little bit? Jimmy Butler is the lifeblood of this Heat team. Folks, I will say this every day. I do not care. We get proven right every single day by it. So we will continue to bring it up. Do not bet the Heat. Do not root for the Heat. Do not expect the Heat to win any games. If Jimmy Butler is not in the starting lineup, he makes everybody around him better. Yes, he doesn't go get you the 30 points a game. He's about, you know, 19 to like. 22 points a game and that's all he needs to be because he's got great shooters around him literally everybody can hit threes on this team bam out of bio stepping up even more in the absence of jimmy butler but you need jimmy butler he holds everybody accountable he elevates everybody's play i mean you have to guard him he's not the best three-point shooter he's a solid you know probably 34 percent he maybe he only takes like three to five a game if he takes three he hits like one if he takes five he hits like two so you know two or three he has the ability to go like four or five, five or five from three. He has that ability, but he's not consistently a good three-point shooter. But you still have to respect it. So he stretches the floor with this three-point shot. He he can drive as good as, you know, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, you know, who else drives really good? Just those two, kind of good. Uh, Kyrie Irving, this man's got athletic ability to drive, finish at the rim with a layup, you know, kick it out to the three-point shot, take the three himself, pick and roll with Bam Adebayo. So really, Jimmy Butler is the glue that holds this team together. So when he's not playing, when he's not in the starting lineup, they're just kind of lost out there without him so the Clippers without Patrick Beverly Patrick Beverly I'm pretty sure um, without um, Paul George and without Kawhi Leonard they still can beat this Heat team and I know the Heat were missing a lot of players as well besides Jimmy Butler but I mean folks come on Come on. Uh, so Clippers get the win, 109-104. One of our moneymaker picks. Very well done. And then uh, the last game of the night, Warriors and the Suns. And the Suns without uh, Devin Booker again get the win. Love to see that. And the Warriors, um, you know, they get the loss here. We had them in our power rankings. They're kind of falling off a little bit. Do we keep them? Haven't looked the greatest this last week stretch. So we'll talk about them when we get there. But very well done by the Suns. Love seeing them uh, prosper here. Alrighty, now let's go through, dig a little bit deeper, who's being good, who's being bad, and break down the stats a little bit. So we'll start here with the Trailblazers and Rockets in an absolutely magnificent game to watch. Best game of the night, competitive, close, back and forth, down the stretch, in the fourth quarter, clutch shots. So let's start here with the Rockets and John Wall. He put up 20 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds. He shot 3 of 7 from 3, hit an absolute clutch 3-pointer in the fourth quarter. Absolutely love it. Victor Oladipo, 25 points. Points, five assists, seven rebounds, folks. They work together. John Wall and Victor Oladipo both work together, both putting up a lot of shots. 23 shots for Oladipo, 16 shots for Wall, and they both have 20 plus points. 25 for Oladipo, 20 for Wall. So it's working together. It's all coming together. And then the emergence of Christian Wood here. I'm absolutely loving this man back in the starting lineup here, back at the starting center position. 22 points, 12 rebounds. Love it. He's got the height, he's got the beef. He's better than Demarcus Cousins, in my opinion, right? right now and then having DeMarcus Cousins to come off the bench is absolutely fantastic for this Rockets team. Um, all right, Eric Gordon coming off the bench, 11 points, four rebounds. He can still get it done. P.J. Tucker, you know, just being the beef, just being the great defense that he is. We know he doesn't, you know, really contribute more than like eight points a game, really. Only two here. 
But with Christian, with Christian Wade, Victor Oladipo, and John Wall, the primary ball scorers, that's all you know. That's all the Rockets need. They need the shooters, and then they're great on defense too. With uh, you know PJ Tucker and Eric Gordon, and DeMarcus Cousins, and Christian Wood. So love this Rockets team. We're going to be big on them. Are they going to crack the top ten this week? You have to wait and see. But um, love the direction that they're going on. Um, absolutely magnificent. Alrighty, the Blazers and folks, they just need to get C.J. McCollum back and they'll be right back on track where they left off in the bubble last season, where they left off really kind of before even uh, C.J. McCollum went out. So Damian Lillard, 30 points, 9 assists, the man is absolutely killing it here he shot 47 percent and took 23 shots so absolutely i love that 54 or 45 percent from the three five of 11 so the man is absolutely cashing out here he you know this wasn't just a bubble performance this man can score and shoot the ball he's very very good he can shoot the long three kind of like curry maybe a step back of curry's actual level but he's still putting up very solid points here with 30 gary trent jr a magnificent game by him he's stepping up here in the absence of cj mccollum so i absolutely Absolutely love that as well. 23 points by him. He shot 7 of 13 from 3. 53%. Very well done. 50% from the field. I mean just getting it done um, and that's what this Blazers team is high efficient three-point scores a lot of points can you know turn around a game instantly and they got out to a huge start in this game I mean I think they put up like 38 points in the first quarter while the Rockets put up barely even 20 I may I don't even think they may have reached 20 it was like a big 20 point lead early on in this game and then you know just the, the Houston Rockets continue to stay with it the shots start to fall they get good defensive stops because that's I mean they're great scoring ball but they also have really Real good defense, too, as well. So, really a complete team there with the Houston Rockets. And dare I say this, this is the best Houston Rockets team in the last three seasons. Do I say that? I think I do. Even with James Harden and Russell Westbrook, the team was never like really good and really solid and really consistent. But I really think here, Victor Oladipo, John Wall, a lot to prove. Both got traded from their teams. Both were like the guy on their respective teams. Victor Oladipo with the Pacers, John Wall with the Wizards. They were the guys. And now they kind of have to share a role here. But they're doing very fantastic. So we love the Houston Rockets here. Alrighty, Derek Jones Jr., let's go back to uh, the Blazers here for a second. 11 points, 7 rebounds, doing a little bit more here, and that's what we want. We want to see Derek Jones Jr. just be a little bit more better um, scoring, rebounds, assisting, just making a more impact on the game, especially in the starting lineup. So, 11 points on 62% shooting, I can definitely get behind it. The 7 rebounds, once again, very good, So he's and 3 blocks, so look at that. So... Derek Jones Jr., where he's slowly getting acclimated into, you know, what what the expectations are for a starter. Love to see this man getting some play here. Um, he that He's very athletic. One of my favorite players to watch. So, very glad that he's having success here for this Blazers team. Um, Alrighty, so that is Rockets Trailblazers. Close game, 104-101 for the Rockets. Alrighty, let's move on to the Lakers and Pistons now. Uh, no Anthony Davis for the Lakers and the Pistons were just eating down low all game and especially in the fourth quarter. I think they like almost ended the game on like a 16-0 run late in the fourth quarter. It was really poor defense by the Lakers because they really had no beef down low, unfortunately. Uh, so LeBron James will start here. 22 points, 10 Assists, seven rebounds, doing what LeBron James does. 50% from the three, four of eight. The man, the fact that this man is developing almost an unstoppable uh, three point jump shot is absolutely incredible. Um, you know, we see Giannis struggling from the three, and LeBron just started to develop the shot, you know, a couple seasons ago, probably like five, six, seven seasons ago, but he's working on it. He's working at it, getting better every year, getting more consistent every year. So, I mean, the fact, you know, the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. LeBron James has literally just, that's a myth now. You can teach an old dog new tricks because LeBron has developed the three-point shot, and it's very good, folks. It's really real good. Um, all righty. So, um, let's shout out Kyle Kuzma. He actually did real good this game. 22 points, 10 rebounds, shot 52%. So, you know, Kyle Kuzma shows glimpses, very small glimpses and infrequent glimpses of being good, but he's not consistent at all. So, you know, this is a good game by him. Let's shout him out, but we need to see this game on a nightly basis. I'll take three of seven, 42%, if he's putting up 22 points from three. I, I, can, I can live with the three of seven from three. 
Um, especially when he's getting, you know, on the rebounding and cleaning up the glass, 22 points. So great game here by Kyle Kuzma, but we want to see it more consistently. Um, Dennis Schroeder, oh my goodness. I was big on him on the start of the season. I thought he was going to be real good and real consistent, but really he's not. And especially this last week, these last two weeks, he's really just been eh. Average, only 10 points here, shot 25%. This cannot be going on. And he only has four assists at, like, the starting point guard position. So, um, you know, I, Dennis Schroeder has got to get better. He's just got to get better in this offense. Hopefully he does. I think he can. He does have the ability. His ceiling is pretty good, but he hasn't really been showing it here with the Lakers. Um, you know, so far I've been just chalking it up to, you know, a new system, playing with LeBron. It's not easy to play with LeBron. He's got a lot of expectations, a lot of demands. He demands you to be great on a nightly basis because he's great on a nightly basis. So um, Dennis Schroeder's definitely got to get a little bit better. So, I mean, I mean, just look at the scoring effort. It's not good. Marcus All, no points. KCP, six points. Dennis Schroeder, 10 points. Alex Caruso, 10 points. Um, or KCP, what did I say? Dennis Schroeder, or Alex Caruso, six points. Um, what else do we got? Taylor Horton Tucker, he had a clutch shot in um, late in the fourth quarter, so I will give it up to him. 13 points. I mean, look at this, man. 14 minutes off the bench, 13 points on 71% shooting. Yes, that's what we want to see. Finally, somebody stepping up on this team, but it can't be, you know, your fifth bench player stepping up. You need the starters here, and the starting stat lines were not good. Um, um, so unfortunate here for the Lakers. Alrighty, let's go to the Pistons now. Blake Griffin, his best game of the season, led the team in scoring with 23 points. Very well done. Shot well, 5 of 10 from the 3, developing that outside jump shot he loves. Doesn't like to drive anymore. Who can blame him? I mean, folks, I mean, the 3-point shot is the big shot. I would take the 3 too if I was a big man. Um, so 23 points, 6 assists by him, 3 rebounds, kind of getting it done. So very well done there. Derrick Rose off the bench, 14 points, 3 assists. Um, who else did good this game? We got Wayne Ellington with six point, or 20 points. Deion Wright with 6 points, but he had 6 assists and 8 rebounds, so not bad there. And then Jeremy Grant with 14 points. So And Mason Plumlee kind of really ate all day, all game, just really being good there. 17 points, 10 rebounds. You know, when you don't have to go up against Anthony Davis, it makes your day a little bit better there. So, um, yeah, the paint was really wide open in the fourth quarter, down late in the stretch, and the Pistons ate. So, um, this Pistons team isn't good. Everybody, you know, all the major sports accounts, you know, are posting Blake Griffin highlights, you know, celebrating his one good game. Just don't fall for it, folks. The man is still not good. This Pistons team is still not good. Good. Yes, they beat the Lakers, but it was in a back-to-back -back second road game. They just finally came off of, you know, their winning streak on the road uh, on their previous road game before this one. Uh, so they weren't giving it their all. Anthony Davis wasn't there. They were eating down low. Uh, so let's we'll, we'll give it up to Blake Griffin for this game, but um, we'll, we probably won't see a game like this for the rest of the season, honestly. <laughs> So, Pistons get the win, upsetting the Lakers. And this is a bad loss for the Lakers. Don't get me wrong. This is definitely a bad loss. Um, and when we talk about the Lakers in our power rankings, we will kind of focus a little heavy, a little heavy on this game. Not too heavy, but a little heavy on kind of our reasoning for what happens to the Lakers in our power rankings. So, all right, let's move on here. Already Clippers in the heat and the Clippers getting it done with no... Um, um, no, uh, Paul George, no Kawhi Leonard and no, um, Patrick Beverly. So three key starters, three main, I mean, those are their three main scores of the basketball folks. So without those three, they still get the win. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, and everybody contributing, I mean, folks, I'm just going to read you the points here. Let's go through these names and the points here. Terrence Mann, 12 points, Nicholas Batum, 18 points, Serge Ibaka, 10 points, Luke Kennard, 9 Nine points. Reggie Jackson, 16 points. Those were all the five starters. Basically, everybody in double-digit scoring. That's how you get it done. And that's why I like this Clippers team, even without Kawhi Leonard, even without Paul George, because these are a lot of role players. 
that don't get their moment because, you know, it's always outshadowed by, you know, the superstars of Leonard and Paul George. And then you get Patrick Beverly and then it's all the other guys. It's the supporting cast. So when the major superstars are out, the supporting cast kind of balls out really good. So I absolutely love it. The heart, the dedication, the depth that this team plays with, even without their superstars, their leaders on the floor. Love it, love it, love it. And not only the starters, the bench players as well. So let's keep going with the scores. Lou Williams, seven. 17 points. Marcus Morris, 16 points. Um, Zubak, 6 points. I'll take 6 points. Yes, especially when everybody else is contributing. I'll take 6 points all day, especially with 8 rebounds from Zubak. And then Amari or Amir Coffee, five points in only 16 minutes. That was the last bench score. So, I mean, everybody's contributing so well. Love it, love it, love it. Very well done. And uh, Serge Ibaka, 10 points, eight the boards, 13 rebounds, three assists. Just everybody really getting it done. Reggie Jackson with his 16 points had six assists and eight rebounds. And just look at these rebounding totals. I mean, folks, um, you know, only two for Terrence Mann and Nicholas Batum, but the, um, or the, those are assists. Um, let's go back to the rebounds. Uh, three for Terrence Mann, six for Nicholas Batum, Serge Ibaka with 13, Kennard with four, Reggie Jackson with eight, Lou Williams with five, Marcus Moore Sr. with five, Zubak with eight, and even Amir Coffey with three. So everybody on the defensive end is just clamping down, getting the board, securing the rebound, securing the possessions, and then translating that to points on the other end. So very, very big into this Clippers team. Even without their superstars, love it. They all play so well, um, and they all just buy in. And now let's go to the Heat because they they kind of have it too a little bit. But you know when they were they were just missing so many people. I mean, look at all these superstars not playing for them. Avery Bradley, Jimmy Butler, Goran Dragic. Um, obviously, Udonis Haslam. He never plays. He's just a, basically an assistant out there. And then Andre Iguodala, great kind of on the defense. He can hit the three. He can extend the floor. Great defender as well. Um, and just kind of great veteran. So. Alrighty, let's see. Uh, well, Duncan Robinson, he needs to step up when Jimmy Butler is not on the floor, and he did not. Only six points, shot two of five from three, but only six points. It's not going to get it done. Tyler Hero had 19 points. I'll give him that. That's pretty decent with 10 rebounds to go along with it. Kendrick Nunn, 10 points, just all right. Kelly Olenek, nine points, only four rebounds. Um, do we go over... Bam out of bio. I mean, he's always so good, and this man needs to be, you know, elevated even higher than kind of what he's kind of getting right now in the media. Uh, but he's definitely so freaking good. Um, but you know, he can't be the superstar when Jimmy Butler's not there. It just does not translate. So Bam out of bio, 16 points, 13 rebounds, seven assists, really just getting it done. And Tyler Hero had a real good game. Let's go back to him. 19 points with his 10 rebounds and five assists. Didn't shoot well from three, unfortunately. Only one of six. He's usually better than that. The three point shooting is definitely a little bit better than what it kind of is right now in this game. Um but yeah, unfor unfortunately for the Heat, um, they all don't kind of buy in and step up when, you know, they're kind of superstars, they're kind of leaders are not on the floor like the Clippers are. So we love the Clippers plus four and a half last night. They went out right, kind of exactly how we thought the game would, or how I thought the game would play out even without their superstars. So absolutely love this Clippers team. They're good, folks. Alrighty, and then the last game from last night, Suns and the Warriors. Let's start here with the Warriors. We'll start here. Uh, they lose the game, unfortunately. Steph Curry, 27 points, 5 of 10 from the 3, 4 assists. Draymond Green, 2 points, 6 rebounds, or 4 rebounds, 6 assists. You know, didn't shoot well, but we know Draymond Green doesn't really contribute so much in the points departments. More, you know, his rebounding, his defensive presence, his leadership on the floor. Uh, Kelly Oubre, oh my goodness, this man needs to step up more, folks. He's got a high ceiling, but he's not having success here, and it's unfortunate. Kelly Oubre Jr., only 4 points, 4 rebounds, shot 9, <laughs> shot 9%, <laughs> folks. 9% for a shooting guard. Come on. You've got to step it up a little bit more here. You lost to a Suns team without Devin Booker. That's just unacceptable, honestly. Um, I know Chris Paul's great. I know DeAndre Ayton's great. But come on. Devin Booker is their main scorer, their lifeblood, their superstar, their main guy. So, you know, when he's not on the floor, you've got to take advantage. And Kelly Oubre did not take advantage here. I cannot believe it. Um, <laughs> Alrighty. 
James Wiseman took a little bit of a step back here these last couple of games he's been you know not the starter anymore coming off the bench and it's usually you know very good for him him coming off the bench is usually a little bit better than what he is in the starting role so here on the bench kind of floundered a little bit only five points six rebounds just never really got it going unfortunately nobody really on the bench got it going besides Kent Bays or uh, Eric Poshko was 12 points solid contribution from Kent Bazemore with seven Brad Wanamaker with a Jordan Poole with seven um, but you know the starters really just not getting it done here Junior Ubre Jr. with four points Looney with two points and only four rebounds really the bigs just did not have a good game and it's because DeAndre Ayton's good as heck down low folks so it should really be no surprise that DeAndre Ayton is better than James Wiseman and Kevin Looney um, and then Draymond Green with uh, two points so three scores totaling eight points that's not going to get it done. Um, and then Andrew Wiggins. We've got to get up, give it up to him because he's really just the second most consistent scorer on this team. Obviously, Steph Curry's number one. And Andrew Wiggins is having a real great year here, um, fitting in, doing what he's supposed to do on a nightly basis. 16 points, five rebounds, one assist. He shot decently, 54% from the field, 50% from three. I can get behind that all day. So the points are coming by him. So I can definitely get behind it, but uh, everybody else is just not performing on a consistent basis. So that's definitely going to reflect in our power rankings because we definitely were big on the Warriors, probably an overstep by us, but hey, we're going to get it right this week. So nothing great by the Warriors here. Now let's go to the Suns. No Devin Booker and they still win the game. No Cameron Payne off the bench and they still win the game. Absolutely love it. Uh, Chris Paul, 13 points, four assists, uh, two steals. All right. McCall Bridges here, 20 points, five assists. Not bad as well. Shot 60%. DeAndre Ayton, 12 points, 13 rebounds, four assists, one steal. Had four offensive rebounds. Um, Cameron Johnson, 13 points. Jay Crowder, 16 points. And then look at this great bench contribution here. Frank Kaminsky, love to see this man. I mean, this is why the Suns won because of their bigs. DeAndre Ayton, 13 rebounds, 12 points. Frank Kaminsky, 12 points, 13 rebounds, 8 assists. Holy cow, to go along with that. Woo, Frank Kaminsky, 8 all day in this game. Nobody could stop the bigs for the Suns. All right, this is real good here by the Suns. Not great by the Warriors, folks. What a good game here. Um, Yeah, the bigs, 8 all day. And then look at that, Jay Crowder with 9 rebounds as well. Damn. Uh, this Suns team, they're pretty good. They are pretty good. Their starters, they're getting a little bit more deep. I love to see this Frank Kaminsky kid. Um, loved watching him. You know, he had a big presence in the March Madness tournament for Wisconsin. Pretty sure he played there uh, a couple seasons ago. I'm talking like four or five years ago. Um, so I'm glad that this man is finally getting some great recognition here in the league. Absolutely fantastic. Let me make sure this is, this is the right guy I'm talking about. Um, almost certain. Yes, this is the guy. <laughs> a thousand percent. All right. Uh, just making sure my facts are straight here. So, um, yeah, when was he drafted? Let me see this. 2015, yeah. Okay, so we're right on track here. I absolutely love it, yes. So this man's finally getting the recognition he deserves, finally getting some nice minutes off the bench, and it's absolutely fantastic. So, um, all right, that's all the NBA from last night. Now let's kind of go and try and repeat a nice old money maker here for tonight's games because there are a lot of games. Uh, let's first see, are there any nationally televised games? Yes, there are 730 on ESPN, Bucks, Pelicans. We might be able to take this game. If there's good value, if we can get the Bucks for like minus five, we might be able to go in on this. So we'll see. Um, all right, so Bucks Pelicans, 730 on ESPN. And then the night game, Pel or Jazz Mavericks, and this is going to be a good one at two. Um, Jazz, like them all day. Y'all know how I feel about the Jazz. Big on the Jazz. Um, currently number four in our power rankings coming into today's power rankings, so we'll see if they move up any. But uh, and we're also not big on the Mavericks, so we might be able to get some good value there as well. Uh, so two great games on tonight. That's what we want to see. Um, all right, so let's refresh these lines, get these lines up to date for today's matchup. So here we go. Hawks and Wizards. Wizards plus four, Hawks minus four, and I love the – I absolutely hate the Wizards, folks. Yes, Bradley Beal is good, but that is it. Russell Westbrook is not good. So Hawks minus four, Clint Capella, Trey Young should be playing. Everything kind of reflects good on how the line should be when all the starters are playing. So Hawks minus four is very interesting. 
I actually like it. Let's see if we get any better value. We'll come back to this game. But Hawks minus four. The Wizards, we're not buying the Wizards at all, folks. Russell Westbrook cannot control himself with the turnovers. So until he does, which he won't, because, you know, that's the knock against them seasons on end. We talk, I mean, folks. Any, whenever you talk about Russell Westbrook, it's just his turnovers. I mean, you bring up the triple doubles. It doesn't translate to wins. We have the same conversations every single season because he does not turn it around. And it's unfortunate because he's great to watch. Um, alrighty, so Hawks minus four is decent there. We'll come back to this. Pacers in the Hornets. Ooh, good matchup here. Hornets plus three and a half. Pacers minus three and a half. Two real good teams. Isn't this a rematch? Didn't they just face a couple days ago? Let me double check this. I think they did in the Hornets one. Pacers one. Somebody won. <laughs> one of the two teams won. Um, all right. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm seeing it wrong. Was I wrong? May have been wrong. Um, yeah, Pacers Hornets right here. Um, is that no, is that what we're talking about? <laughs> Pacers Hornets, yeah. Okay. So they faced uh when was this? Wednesday. And the Pacers won 116, 106. Another game facing each other. Going to stay away from it. These are two pretty decent teams, kind of above average teams. They've got pieces everywhere. Uh, should be a good one to watch, but we'll stay away from it. Really could go either way. Not really any good value here with only the three and a half either. Alrighty, Pelicans in the Bucks and ooh, Pelicans or Bucks minus seven here. Ooh, a little higher than we would like. Um, Brandon Ingram, Zion are absolutely fantastic. Now, is Zion gonna be able to go toe to toe with kind of um, you know, what's his name, um, Giannis? Is he gonna be able to do that? Is Brandon Ingram gonna be able to drive as well with all that beef down low? Pelicans at home. We know how Lonzo Ball is playing. We absolutely hate that. <laughs> I do not like that, man. Um, so Bucks minus seven. Interesting. I think I like it better than the Pelicans plus seven. We'll come back to this one. Seven's kind of a lot here to give up, especially with this Bucks team. Um, the Pelicans hit the three very well. The Bucks don't, so complete mismatch there, but also kind of a complete mismatch down low with Zion and you know, Giannis. So, um, the threes could be an easy backdoor cover for the Pelicans. That's why I'm a little hesitant on swallowing the seven there. Um, Cavs, Knicks. All right. Two decent teams. They've proven a lot. The Cavs have proven they, they can beat the Nets. The Knicks have proven they were good. I mean, the first, I mean, they've, I think they're like on a three game losing streak, but before that, I mean, they were, you know, two games winning two straight games, then losing two straight games then losing. So they've got some nice young pieces there. Definitely, uh, definitely going to stay away from this one. Cause you know, two rising teams with a lot of role players can really just go either way and it's literally I mean look at the spread it's plus one minus one so Vegas is thinking the exact same way it literally could go either way um, home team advantage give it to the Knicks for that reason alone and that's why they're only plus one so definitely staying away from this one we won't even touch that one Kings Raptors Kings have kind of been upsetting a lot of teams recently we get five and a half here this Raptors team has not been consistent their shooters have not been consistent so this could be a play here with the five and a half points I mean let's just look at what the Kings have done recently we'll take you know the last three days in the NBA um, so let's go yesterday nothing happened See, I hate, yeah, I do not like this website. But um, here we go. Kings beating the Magic. The Magic are better than the Raptors, in my opinion. And they just beat them two nights ago on the road and put up 121 points. That's real good. Um, all right, let's go to their last game. There's uh, two games out. Um, and the Kings, where are they at? Uh, it was postponed. Their last meeting against the Grizzlies was postponed. Um, can we go to their last game then? They're three games out then. Three, potentially three games ago. Should have been three games ago. Can we even find them? They beat the Knicks, 103-94. So they're putting up a lot of points. They're winning games. They're beating, you know, the easy teams, the teams that they should be competitive against, should be beating, you know, not the high tiers, the the Lakers, the Clippers, the Bucks, the Celtics, the Nuggets, the 76ers, but they're beating the Knicks. They're beating, um, oh man, who I we just said it, and I'm blanking already. They beat the Knicks. They beat the Magic. I mean, folks, I think we'll take the five here. We'll take the five. That's great value here. Could be a close game. 
don't really see the Raptors blowing out the Kings. The Raptors can't blow out anybody. They can't even win games consistently. So, yes, Kings plus five. This is the first good bet that we've seen so far. Great value with the points, and we'll take the points here. Kings plus five and a half. Love it. Alrighty, Nets Thunder. Nets minus nine and a half. They should cover that, but we're going to stay away from it. The Thunder, um, you know, their role players, they just beat, uh, what was their last game against the Suns? Uh, you know, that kind of Chris Paul, you know, rivalry, and they stepped up big and won the game. So, nine and a half, going to stay away from it. It's a lot to swallow. Um, so, not good value there. 76ers and the Timberwolves. Ooh, 76ers minus seven. Coming off of a huge win against the Lakers. Do they kind of flounder a little bit? Possibly they had the day off. This Timberwolves team is really not good at all. Um, nobody's going to be able to stop MB down low. It's just nobody's going to be able to. So this isn't bad. Seven's a lot to swallow, obviously. We may come back to this one. We may squeeze it in. Let's see if we get anything else good. Clippers, Mavericks, Clippers plus four. And do we have any update on um, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George? I would assume by this line they're not playing. The Clippers with those two should not be plus four against this Magic team. So I think once again, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George will not be playing here. Um, so we will stay away from it. I know I kind of bragged about liking the Clippers supporting cast, but this Magic team is pretty good. They've got solid pieces. Aaron Gordon didn't play well last game, so he probably steps it up a little bit better here. Uh, so we'll stay away from it. Especially Clippers on a back-to-back -back with those role players. That now you're starting to get into the little bit of trouble area there. Um, alrighty, and then Nuggets Spurs. Nuggets minus four and a half over the Spurs. And I'm real big on this Nuggets team. They are winning five straight, folks. We're putting them in our power rankings. We'll tell you that right off the rip. Uh, Spurs. Great defense, great lockdown defense. So the plus four and a half for the Spurs there is pretty decent. Uh, gonna stay away from it because I don't think it's any great value either way. And I think I saw some better things, um, you know, previously that we like better. So this is gonna be a good game to watch. I think the Nuggets should have no trouble winning this game. Uh, but the Spurs defense, you know how that goes. So we'll stay away from that one. And then the last game, Mavericks in the Jazz in the Jazz minus four. I think I like it all day. I cannot trust this Mavericks team, folks. The two teams that are definitely totally different from last season in the bubble to this season right now are the Heat and the Mavericks. And the Heat have a have an excuse because it's Jimmy Butler. We we know this. We talked about this last season in the bubble. It's all Jimmy Butler that brings everybody together. The man's a superstar. Um, he's fantastic. He really elevates everybody else around him. The Mavericks, they don't have an excuse. Luka's still getting triple doubles. They're losing games. Nobody else is performing, you know, exceptionally on a game-to-game -game basis consistently. So, they don't have any excuse. So, yes, we'll take the Jazz minus four at home over the Mavericks. They're the better team straight up. Um, they didn't play last night, correct? We didn't go over there. We didn't go over that team. Double check. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, no, they did. Did they? Did we cover this game? <sighs> what is this? I do not like this matchup, this website. When is this date from? We're, oh, we're last week. All right, here we go. This Thursday, yes. All right, here we go. Yes, they didn't play yesterday. The Jazz did not play yesterday. So, yes, we'll take the Jazz minus four. Kings plus five and a half. Let's get one more in here. A lot of games to choose from. Um, and we're going to go. Do we do it with the Hawks? Do we do the Hawks minus four? Or do we do the 76ers minus seven? Which one do I like better? Which one should we like better? Let's talk about it. Let's talk through it again. Let's see if we kind of talk ourselves into one being better. Um, Wizards, Bradley Beal, he's putting up 45 points a game, but it's not translating into wins. Does he take, you know, does he just get totally frustrated this game at home? Or is this the game that they turn everything around? Russell Westbrook plays great. They're at home. Possibly. I don't really see that happening, though. <laughs> I really don't see that happening. Um, and then what was the other one? 76ers and the Timberwolves. 76ers coming off of a high, high, huge win over the Lakers. Kind of floundered a little bit in the fourth quarter. Lakers were able to kind of cut the lead down to one, take the lead. It was Tobias Harris with a nice clutch jump shot to win the game by one. Um, alrighty, we're going to roll high. We're going to 
continue with the Hawks here. We'll make this one in our moneymaker. We just can't trust the Wizards, folks. I don't trust the Wizards at all. Um, that's really it. That's really it. I do love the 76ers, and you'll see that when we get to our power rankings. I'll tell you that right now. But um, the sevens a little much there. Timberwolves could possibly pull off the upset just because the 76ers are coming off of such a huge win. Could be a little cloud, you know, clouding the judgment, clouding, you know, the efficiency on the floor a little bit that win. So this is going to be our official moneymaker. Love the Kings plus five and a half. Love the Jazz minus four and a half. Really, really, really like the Hawks minus four and a half. So this is our three team moneymaker looking to get back on track. I mean, folks, we're absolutely killing it these last two days. Let's make it a third day in a row. Kings plus five and a half. Jazz minus four. Hawks minus four. Put a hundred. Classic winning, you know, 690. 689 profit 590 folks um you know solid money right here solid money um alrighty let's go over to our nba power rankings here we go we finally started this last week on saturday we do this every day on friday so, you know, this is why we're doing it today. Um, but, yeah, a lot of changes here. A lot of changes here. Um, I'll tell you right off the rip, two teams are completely off the top ten. So we have to introduce two new teams. Um, do we have a new number one? You're damn right we do. You're damn right we got a new number one in the league, folks. I love it. Um, all righty, so here we go. Let's uh, We'll go from ten to one, tell you what uh, the new rankings are. So here we go. Uh, number 10, or well, let's tell you what the uh, the power rankings were coming into this week, um, if you're not watching. Here we go. 10, uh, Celtics at 10, Nets at 9, Bucks at 8, Warriors at 7, Hawks at 6, Suns at 5, Jazz at 4, 76ers at 3, Clippers at 2, Lakers at 1. That was the power rankings coming into this week, into today. Um, all right, so here we go. New number 10 team. No longer the Celtics, but they will be uh, moving up. We all have to just see. Um, but the new number 10 team is going to be the Hawks. Um, you see they're, they're dropping down a tad, starting at 6 going into this week, dropping down to number 10. All right, what have they done? What have they done since last Saturday, since we ranked them? Well, they went... Where are these Hawks at? Where are these Hawks at? Um, they went one and two. They beat the Clippers. Good win there. But they lost against the Bucks when they didn't have, you know, um, Clint Capella and Trey Young. That's kind of why we're big on the Hawks. So, you know, we can kind of excuse that loss. And then they were very, very close to beating the Nets. I mean, they went into overtime and only lost by four. So, great showing there. But, I mean, this team is really kind of dependent on Trey Young and Clint Capella heavily. Very heavily. So, we're not going to kick the Hawks out of the top 10 just quite yet. We'll drop them down a little bit. I still like what they do. I mean, when, they, when they're when they fully healthy, I mean, folks, they're great. Trey Young's great. And Click Capella's down low is great. They're almost unstoppable. I mean, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Nets. That's real, real great there. Going against one of the most superstar, talented teams, one of the more emerging teams, talked about teams in the league and still able to go into overtime and be very, very close to beating them. So we give them a lot of credit for beating them, but you know, it's really just kind of, I, I mean, I'm not really seeing any great production from their star, from their other starters, their bench players, their role players, I'm not seeing any real great value. So this team, they're great when everybody's healthy, when Clint Capella and Trey Young are healthy and playing. But other than that, that's really all they are. And I really, I mean, they're great. They're great together. They're super great together. Don't get me wrong, but that's really all they are, unfortunately. So they dropped down a little bit. Hopefully we can keep them in the top 10. We'll come at you, you know, next Friday, see what they do, you know, during this week span. So you see if they kind of get better, anybody kind of rising up. So uh, don't want to take them out of the top 10. So we move them down to number 10. Alrighty, new number nine team is no longer the Nets, and this is our first new team in the top ten. We're going to go the Indiana Pacers. Alrighty, they don't need Victor Oladipo. They've kind of made that pretty clear. That's why they traded him, and they really haven't gone down any um, gone down since that trade. Have they gone up since that trade? Well, the last week, uh, they're two and three, or two and one, two wins, one loss. Uh, they beat the Hornets. They beat the Raptors. Solid wins. Not really. Those aren't that great teams. And they lost against the Raptors. So they beat the Raptors once, lost to them once, and then beat the uh, Hornets. So 
decent wins there. Nothing great, but the way that Sabonis is playing and um, Bogdanovich is playing, I like to see that. Um, uh, they don't even have TJ Warren yet. I mean, did you remember him in the bubble? Absolutely fantastic. You know, putting up 30 points a game, but uh, he hasn't played at all this season, I don't think. So, you know, still got some players in um, on reserve for this uh, Pacers team to get kind of back tra- to get back on track here. Um, I'm blanking on some of these Pacers, Pacers players, so let's go here. Obviously, love Sabonis, obviously. We said that. Um, who else was stepping up? Uh, Miles Turner, we saw that. And, uh, yeah, uh, Malcolm uh, Brogdon, not Bogdanovich. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon has really step, uh, been stepping up. TJ McConnell has kind of been decently good, and Doug McDermott's really kind of stepping it up off the bench too. So solid players here for the Pacers. Some decent wins this last week, so let's move them up. I mean, Sabonis is honestly playing out of his mind, really. He's looking like maybe even better than Luka. Yes, he's not getting the triple-doubles on a nightly basis, but his his uh his performance is translating to wins on the court and I will take wins over triple doubles all day. So Pacers finally putting them in the top ten here at number nine. Alrighty, new number eight team. We're gonna go the Boston Celtics and they get Jason Tatum back. They're looking real good. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown looking real good. The Celtics in their last, uh, you know, the last weeks and Saturday, their two wins, one loss. They beat the Bulls. They beat the Cavs. Once again, not really solid wins there, just all right wins. And then they lost against the Spurs closely. You know, remember that game, the Spurs defense really clamped down late in the fourth quarter and they beat the Celtics. But with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, they're a great tandem. Um, they're not as deep as they were last season, but when Jason Tatum's there, you can you have a 50-50 chance of winning any game between Jason Brown and Jalen Tatum. Um, Jason Brown, Jalen. <laughs> Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Uh, Marcus Smart's got to step it up a little bit more. Kemba Walker's got to step it up anymore, uh, some more. The Celtics don't have a great big. That's why they're only at eight right now. Nothing special about this team. Just two great superstars balling out on a nightly basis, and they usually get the wins because of that. But um, definitely got to get a better big down there. Hate Daniel Tice. Tristan Thompson's all right, and Robert Williams is nothing great either. So um, Celtics. Celtics at number eight here just because of the week they had Jason Tatum getting back in the starting lineup and they're looking pretty decent here. So, um, yeah, Celtics at number eight. Just all right so far. All righty. New number 17. The Warriors are completely off this list. They're completely off this list. I mean, they're one in. They're, um, they haven't really shown us anything great, nothing consistent. Kelly Oubre Jr. is not doing anything great, anything consistent. So uh, missed the mark here a little bit with the Warriors at 7, but that's fine. We're getting it right here. And the new number 17 it, team is going to be the Bucks. Giannis is playing good. Uh, Chris Middleton's playing real great, real consistent. Um, Brooke Lopez is playing real good too down there. So we give him the credit as well. They're just not that deep and they're not consistent as at hitting threes, but it's still a solid squad. Chris Middleton's really stepping up here and I absolutely love it. Um, in the last week, they went uh, 3-0 and or no, 2-0. and They only played two games in the last week. They beat the Hawks. Good win there, unfortunately, without Clint Capella and uh, Trey Young. And then they went on and beat the Raptors as well. So they're still winning. Obviously, they're beating the teams that they should be, obviously, Raptors and Hawks. Uh, but hey, we're not going to penalize teams for doing what they're supposed to be doing. Giannis is playing good. Chris Middleton's playing good. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo playing well as well so for that we can uh not uh, move the bucks up uh what do we move them up one spot here i think there were eight last week so bucks at number seven they're super limited in what they can do they kind of i think they're already reaching their ceiling already unfortunately uh so i don't really know if we can move the bucks any higher than number seven they need that consistent three-point shooter outside of chris middleton um already new number six team this right? Yes, it's right. All right, here it is. New number six team. Obviously, not the Hawks anymore. We dropped them down to number 10. The new number six team is the Denver Nuggets. 
Jamal Murray, Jokic, so, so clutch. They're on a five-game winning streak. In the last week, they've beaten the Suns, the Heat, and the Mavs. All pretty good wins there. Those are some solid wins there. Haven't lost. Um, Michael Porter Jr., ever since he's been back in the, you know, kind of rotation off the bench, he's been playing fantastic. He can make an argument for sixth man of the year if he doesn't ever get back to the starting lineup, which they may not. I mean, I would put him in the starting lineup, but the way that the team is working right now, I think we leave it alone and keep them in you know the kind of the six man um kind of rotation so love what the nuggets are doing Jamal Murray can hit the three, can run the pick and roll with Jokic. Jokic is still hitting the three. Um, you know, he's very comparable to what to what Joel Embiid is doing this season in Philadelphia. Um, he's super consistent. We saw this last season in the bubble. They're winning games, five-game winning streak, beating some solid competition here. And yeah, they're pretty freaking deep, folks. Michael Porter Jr. Um Joe Kick, obviously Murray. Uh, let me get to uh, their other bench players because I know there's somebody I'm forgetting. I know there's somebody I'm forgetting. Um, so let's go back. Nuggets, where art thou? Are we just missing them or are we just not seeing them? Nuggets, come on. They're <laughs> Whoa, they haven't played in what, a week? What's going on here? Nuggets, Nuggets, Nuggets. Here we go, finally. And now it's not wanting to load. I <laughs> bring it up. Here we go. All right. Paul Millsap. Yes. You know, doing very good. Uh, very good, you know, beef down low for the starters. Uh, Monte Morris, Jermichael Green. That's who we're forgetting off the bench. So, um, and then Bobo still not even playing. How crazy, folks. This team is so freaking deep. They're so deep. They're so good. They're consistent. They're Everybody's getting it done. We love the Nuggets. Big on the Nuggets. Uh, so, we move them back. Or, we move them to the top 10. And we move them all the way up to number 6 because of it. Already new number five team, and that is the Brooklyn Nets, folks. We had to move them up highly, highly. I mean, they're winning games. They're being productive. The three bigs, the three superstars are all getting it done. They're all putting up 30 points a game. They're all getting their shots up, and it is translating it to wins. Um, James Harden getting it done in their last game. I think he really stepped it up. He's facilitating the floor with the assists and still getting all the points. They don't have to be that deep, but they're still kind of deep. Joe Harris playing very well DeAndre Jordan's being a solid big down low so I mean as long as you've got you know the big three they're going to be winning games and they are winning games and consistently putting up the points so this Nets is starting to look a little um starting to take form of this dangerous Nets team that everybody's been foreseeing and predicting what will happen when you get these three giant superstars, Durant, Irving, and James Harden all together, and they're finally starting to get it figured out. I mean, they just needed a couple games under their belt, folks. I mean, that's natural. That's understandable. And now it's getting to the point where they're almost uh, almost unstoppable. They're almost getting to that point. Um, Yeah, I mean, they're 3 no. In the last week, they beat the Heat twice, and they beat the Hawks. So, solid wins there. Um, so, yeah, Nets at five getting into their rhythm. All righty, number four, I think. No, we do move them up. I forgot to make that switch. So, um, Jazz, they're getting moved up. So, the new number four team is going to be the Los Angeles Lakers, unfortunately. Um, yes, yes. Um, LeBron James is fantastic. Yes, Anthony Davis is fantastic, but I'm not seeing the consistency of the other role players around her. Dennis Schroeder is kind of letting me down a little bit. I was big on him at the beginning of the season, but he's not consistent. He's not getting that. He, he needs to put up kind of 20 points a game, honestly. Um, the way that LeBron James and Anthony Davis play and, you know, kicking, driving to the bucket. I mean, I mean, there's some wide open three pointers, um, three point shooters out there. So Schroeder's got to step it up a little bit. Kyle Kuzma's really not stepping Stepping up on the bench. Now, we definitely stepped it up last game, but Anthony Davis didn't play last game. So, Kyle Kuzma needs to find out how he fits into this offense while LeBron James and Anthony Davis are both in the starting lineup. You got to figure out because that's the offense. That's the offense, LeBron and Anthony Davis. Everything else is just. It, everything else is just supporting cast at this point. So, um, a little bit um, not great this last week for the Lakers. Two and two. They beat the Bulls and Cavs, but lost to the 76ers. 
and the Pistons. Um, obviously, they didn't have Anthony Davis against the Pistons, but that 76ers game kind of showed a lot. I mean, Joel Embiid was still getting it done. Everybody, I mean, you just see the drastic uh, comparisons between the 76ers starters and the Lakers starters in that game. The supporting cast of the Lakers, Seth Curry, Danny Green, Tobias Harris, all getting it done. Tobias Harris hitting the game-winning shot. So, uh, Lakers have to drop down to number four here, unfortunately. I need to see the supporting cast, the bench players start stepping it up for the Lakers, or we just have the same team that the Lakers had last season. LeBron LeBron James, Anthony Davis, fantastic. Have to rely on Lonzo Ball. Have to rely on Danny Green. Have to still rely on Kyle Kuzma to just do something. I mean, just do something. Give us everything you can, which is unfortunately for them like seven points max. So, um, yeah, Lakers dropped down to number four because I need that supporting cast to start stepping it up more than what they are. And they're really not stepping it up. All righty. Uh, new number three team. We go the Los Angeles Clippers. So the Clippers fall down one seed here. Um, Alrighty, in the last week, they beat the Thunder in the Heat and lost to the Hawks. Um, we see, you know, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, you know, resting a little bit here. Um, the one promising thing for this Clippers team in those last week is that, you know, their supporting cast is, you know, really kind of consistent and steps up when the, when the starters are not there. So, um... We have to drop them back because there's better competition out there. There's better play. There's more teams stepping it up, not having to take all these games off. And, you know, for Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, it could be health and safety protocol. So, you know, it's not their fault. But, you know, we know Kawhi Leonard loves his load management and all that. And I absolutely hate that. You've got to be consistent. You've got to keep the momentum and the rhythm. And when you're taking every other game off, you know, I think you hurt the team, the entire team in totality. So, don't like, you know, players taking games off. Um, so Clippers, tad penalized by that. Not too much, but a tad. So they have to drop down a little bit. Uh, so Clippers at number two. I mean, once they're, I mean, they've got, they're super deep, folks. I mean, we went through it. Serge Ibaka is playing absolutely fantastic. Kawhi Leonard's always fantastic. Paul George is playing fantastic as well. But, um, you know, we got to move them down because we got to make way for our new number one and number two here. So here we go. New number two team in the NBA. We got to move up the Jazz. So number four last week, moving all the way up to number one here. Um, yeah, I mean, they're on a nice little win streak as well. In the last week, they beat the Warriors the Knicks and the Mavs um Jordan Clarkson's playing absolutely fantastic Donovan Mitchell's playing absolutely fantastic Rudy Gobert is playing absolutely fantastic now the Nuggets and the Jazz are very comparable but um I like I like Donovan Mitchell then I like Jamal Murray I think Donovan Mitchell's more consistently at scoring the ball um and can facilitate kind of an offense better than Jamal Murray can I do kind of like Jokic a little bit better than Rudy Gobert um I like the way that Jokic can stretch the floor and he's a lot of consistent from the three um so you know very comparable Nuggets and Jazz but um you know this Jazz team they've got the sixth man of the year Rudy Gobert is just eating the glass every game. You can't stop him down low. Pretty decent defender, you know, down low. Really can't, you know, defend the three. That's kind of where, you know, Jokic beats him and Embiid beats him a little bit. Um, Anthony Davis beats him as well. But, um, you know, just the offense just clicks for this Jazz team. Um, really love everything about him, especially, you know, we're big on uh, Jordan Clarkson, as we've said. Um, let me go back because I know I'm missing some names. I know I'm missing some names here. Um, so let me go back here quickly. All right, here we go, Jazz. <clears throat> Um, who is it? Joe Ingles. Yes, he stepped up big. Mike Connolly. I forgot about him as well. Uh, Mike Connolly's always consistent, but Joe Ingles, this is right. He really impressed me because Donovan Mitchell shat, sat out of this the Dallas Mavericks game and Joe Ingles comes in and, uh, you know, is flawless. So they're kind of deep like the Nuggets. I think uh, they're just kind of better, though. Their starters are a little bit better. Uh, love what the Jazz are doing. They're I think they're on like an eight-game winning streak. It's absolutely fantastic what they're doing. So very, very good for the Jazz. Real nice little jump here from four to two. Um, so Jazz at number two. And then our new number one team is the 76ers. Yes, sir. Um, this starting lineup is so good. They're consistent. They can hit the three. They got the defender in Ben Simmons. They got the beef down low with Joel Embiid. The, you know, the supporting cast is decent. De uh, Dwight Howard's all right. 
you know, big, uh, big down low. So not bad there. Um, and then they went and beat the Lakers. I mean, that was probably the most impressive win in the last week. They beat the Lakers and they beat the Pistons and they also lost to the Pistons once, um, in the last week. So two and one, uh, beating the Lakers was fantastic. Um, you know, and just really the big thing was just the clutchness of their supporting cast, Tobias Harris hitting the game winner. I mean, that's what the Lakers were missing and the 76ers have it. They got the beef down low with just Joel Embiid and they've got, you know, the clutch ice in your vein shooters with Seth, Seth, Cur Seth Curry. And uh, Tobias Harris hitting the game winner. Uh, Danny Green, he is having decent success success here. I think he's playing better than what he did last year with the Lakers. So, you know, let's give it up for him. Uh, but, yeah, 76ers at number one. Joel Embiid, they got the MVP. Their starting roster is absolutely clutch, absolutely magnificent. They're first in the East. Well done there. Um, so yeah, 76ers beating the Lakers, that was a huge, huge win, getting it done, losing the lead, I mean, really controlling the game throughout the entire game, I mean, they led basically the, the entire game, Lakers got the lead late in the fourth quarter, and then the clutchness of Tobias Harris, that's why we're having the Lakers climb all the way up to, or the 76ers having the climb all the way up to number one, really because of their performance against the Lakers. When you're going against the best teams in the league, you've got to all be on, and they were all on for that game, so... 76ers at one because of that, really. Uh, alrighty, so this is our NBA Power Rankings going into next week, folks, for this week. Hawks at 10, Pacers at 9, Celtics at 8, Bucks at 7, Nuggets at 6, Nets at 5, Lakers at 4, Clippers at 3, Jazz at 2, and 76ers at 1. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, Suns, uh, Warriors, they probably won't be back in the top 10 for a while. We really got to see them start to turn things around. Kelly Oubre Jr. Please be more consistent. Um, Suns are really right on the verge. Unfortunately, they didn't have Devin Booker for the last week and they were still competitive and, you know, being very good. So they would probably be at number 11 right now, the Suns. Uh, so they can definitely get back in. No worries there. Yeah, definitely. No worries there. Who else is outside looking in? Let's quickly do this. Outside looking in, definitely the Suns. Um, we still got the do we? Yeah, we have Hawks at number ten, so not them. Um, Spurs definitely outside looking in. I want to buy them a little bit heavy as well. Uh, Blazers can easily get in the top ten once CJ McCollum comes back, so they'll be fine. And this Rockets team, I mean, watch out for them. They can definitely creep up inside this top ten as well. Now that Oladipo and John Wall are both playing together, they made it work this week, and I absolutely loved it. So, uh, you know, they would probably be number 11. Maybe the Suns at 12, Rockets at uh, 11. Maybe Spurs at 13. But, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we'll be back uh, next week for our next power ranking, power ranking, seeing where we got to move teams. Um, alrighty, so finally let's go to our NFL prediction. Our prediction, we reacted, guessed the line for the Super Bowl yesterday. We guessed it was two and a half, minus two and a half for the Chiefs. It's minus three. So we take our official pick and uh, we'll give you our official pick here. And then, you know, next week we'll kind of keep you updated throughout the week, maybe every day on a daily basis. If we're, if we're floundering, if we're switching off, maybe we're going to go do another thing or um, if we're still feeling confident. So right now, our official pick for Super Bowl 55 is Chiefs minus three, folks. Um, it's just, we can't trust Tom Brady. I mean, we talked about it all day yesterday. We just cannot trust Tom Brady. These interceptions, the chiefs will make the bucks pay on every single turnover with a touchdown, hands down, guaranteed, no doubt, or yeah, no debate, no question. If Tom Brady throws a pick, Patrick Mahomes will score seven off of it. This is guaranteed. Um, nobody's been able to stop the chiefs, not even the bucks they faced earlier this year. Tyreek Hill, 269 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, you cannot guard this man. Uh, the Chiefs had no problem with the Bills defense, and that's a pretty solid defense. Um, I mean, they got down 9 nothing, and it still didn't phase them. It still didn't phase them. Uh, the... the 
the Packers got down 7 nothing, and it phased them a little bit. They allowed a touchdown on the opening drive, and it phased them a little bit. The Chiefs are not phased by anything. Did you see their run in the playoffs last year? They were down 10 points, 10 or more every single game. They come back and win all of them, even the one in the Super Bowl. Even the one in the Super Bowl when they were down 10 going into the fourth quarter, like midway in the fourth quarter. So they never get phased. They never blink. They can score instantly. Folks, I'm telling you, this is like the only team that can consistently score with like under two minutes whenever the heck they want. Um, it's just, you know, part of the game plan of just drawing out the clock because they know that they can pick up the first down really on three downs. But if they need to go for it on fourth and one, they will because they know they can get they can guarantee three yards on any play they want. Any play they want. So uh, the Bucks, they had the weapons at wide receiver, but it's Tom Brady the, the, delivering the ball, and he was fantastic the first half against the Packers. Super trashed the last half. And, folks, he's just 50-50 in this playoff run. He's just 50-50. Literally every game they played, the opposing team, really, it's a 50-50 chance that they win the game. The Saints, if they don't turn the ball over three times, they win the game. If the, if the Packers just capitalize on one more, one more of those two turnovers that they didn't capitalize on, then they would have won that game. If Aaron Rodgers just doesn't, I mean, had having three chances in the red zone of not converting on a touchdown, I mean, when have we ever seen that from Aaron Rodgers? We haven't. So we're getting Tom Brady wins in weird circumstances of Aaron Rodgers not pulling it through and being clutch, and Drew Brees just throwing multiple interceptions that we haven't seen, especially in a playoff game, in a long time from that man. So Tom Brady's just getting wins off of unusual circumstances where the Chiefs are just absolutely blowing out these teams there's it's no competition whoever they face even the bills it doesn't matter so Chiefs minus three, I really don't see myself changing my opinion throughout next week. Honestly, I think we're big on this. I'm big on this Chiefs team. I'm big on Patrick Mahomes. I'm big on Andy Reid. I'm hugely big on Tyreek Hill. I'm big on um, uh, Travis Kelsey. I'm hugely big on their defense, especially Tyron Matthew. Now, the only good thing about the Bucks here, the only green flag is that they're at home and getting points. So, you know, that's real appetizing. I'm not going to lie. I want to take the Bucks plus three just because they're at home for that reason alone, but I can't let myself get sucked in. The Chiefs are blowing out teams. They're beating every team by like double double digits, two possessions. Every every time it's not two possessions, it's just late backdoor covers like with the Bucks in their first meeting. 14-point uh, win, I think it was, and it got brought down to seven because of backdoor covers, backdoor late scores. <clears throat> so Chiefs minus three. It's our official pick right now on uh, <laughs> February, or January 29th at 1.16 p.m. Like I said, I don't see myself changing it. It's just Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. They can do whatever they want. They, nobody's been able to stop them in three years, folks. We just told you at the top of the show, one of our stories, they're scoring their average, their yards per play these last three seasons. Let's bring it up one more time, folks. Here it is. Chiefs average yards per play, 2018, 6.7, 2019, 6.2, 2020, 6.3. And you may be saying to yourself, oh, isn't it going down? Folks, we're talking about half a yard, half a yard. And it's still six yards per play. Oh, I mean, it's basically number one in the league. I mean, yes, it's number two in 2020 and 2019. But the offense is consistent. Nobody has been able to stop them in the last three seasons. It's wild. It's wild to think about. It's hard to maintain success in this league in a game-to-game -game scenario, year-to-year uh, -year scenario. Now we're talking back-to-back to back years, three straight years of just being fantastic on offense, doing whatever you want. I mean, if you're averaging six, six yards a play, you're not even getting the third downs. And if you get the third downs, it's probably third and one. And if you get the fourth down, it's fourth and one. And if you're averaging six yards a play, you go for it on fourth and one every single time. And the Chiefs are kind of doing that. They're barely punting. They're, they're not even punting, folks. They're not even punting the ball. It's either touchdown, field goal, or that's it. That's the only two options for this Chiefs offense. Touchdown, field goal. We're getting points. We're getting some points. It's just how many are you going to limit us to and how many are we going to kind of limit to ourselves just trying to be too cute in the grand scheme of things. So with all that being said, Chiefs minus three. 
I think it's the only play. And I think we're kind of glad here because, you know, if this was on a neutral field, this is Chiefs minus six. And at that point, I don't take that because I'm not going to give up six points in a Super Bowl game. Super Bowls are usually very, very close. So Chiefs minus three, perfect spot for us. We'll take it. We love it. Everything about the Chiefs is fantastic. There's no downside. There's no flaw. There is no, you know, hole in the Death Star with this Chiefs team. It's just Chiefs being fantastic every single game. Chiefs minus three, folks. That's what we got. Um, alrighty. That is going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. We'll be, we'll be back tomorrow, Saturday, breaking down the NBA. Not sure if we're going to have an NFL segment, like kind of, kind of a main central segment. But um, we'll be back here regardless, stories, NBA, money makers, all that. So um, that's what we got tomorrow on the show, Saturday, Saturday show. First Saturday show without kind of an NFL topic. No Saturday showcase. Maybe we look at something. Maybe. Um, but we're here anyway, still talking. We'll be here talking. We'll be here talking tomorrow. Uh, so live tomorrow, noon Eastern, twitch.tv slash takes by fans. Um, alrighty, folks, we're out of here. Better moneymaker. Make some more money this today. Alrighty.